how not to look frumpy even in the bulkiest layers this winter. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. My goal, my mission through my channel, it's to empower you to be the best, most stylish version of yourself. We're still going to be going outside this winter and we still need to know how to dress well in the winter, even when it's really, really cold. For those of you who don't know, I grew up in Watertown, New York, which is 30 minutes from the Canadian border. Let me tell you, I know cold. So I basically grew up in Watertown and stayed there even after college, went back and worked in my hometown at the local news station for a couple years. College, I was in Syracuse, which is arguably even colder and snowier than Watertown. And then after I worked in Watertown, I went to Rochester, which is also you guessed it, snowy and cold. I did have a break in there where I lived in Texas for eight years, but we are now in Telluride, Colorado, where the weather can get really extreme. We can have like this morning, which was 10 degrees. I understand how to dress for the weather. I also understand how to dress for the weather and still look stylish and streamlined. Cause you don't want to be walking around like this all bulky and bunchy and looking, you know, like you are double the size you actually are. So I'm going to show you all of my tricks. I'm going to show you how not to look frumpy. Okay. That's the goal. So let's get started. Tip number one is to wear the right layers. Just so you know, I've done a video on layering. It's called layering 101. If you want to go back and watch that, I will put a link to it in the description box, but layers are key, very strategic layers. I know there's a tendency to buy these bulky oversized sweaters because they seem like they'll be more snuggly and warm and they are legitimately super warm, right? But they don't layer under anything. It's like a standalone. You have to wear that sweat, big bulky sweater by itself. Let me show you an example of what not to do. So in this example, I put on a tank top. This one just happens to be a cotton tank from Target. I'm skipping a layer here. I'll show you in a minute what layer you're supposed to put here. Then I go for the big bulky sweater. This one's really pretty. It's by ALC. I like it a lot, oversized, but you can't put a coat over this and look normal. So here I am trying to put my big Sam puffer coat over the bulky ALC sweater. It's just not working. I can't move my arms. My shoulders feel tight. I can't zip the jacket. It's not a good look. And then on top of that, on my lower body, I have on baggy jeans. That combo is what's going to make you look frumpier in the winter. Let's take a look at what you should be doing. What you should be doing is thinking about really lightweight, thin layers in strategic fabrics. So I usually do the cotton tank or cami, then I'll layer a long sleeve top over that. In this case, I just threw on a Susanna Monaco top. Another option that I like is a very gauzy long sleeve black tee that's from Nordstrom. I will link both, but you want something that's long sleeve. You want something that's fitted to the body and you want something that's in a breathable fabric. Making sure that it's fitted is very important in terms of keeping you looking less frumpy, more streamlined. Next, I add a cashmere lightweight sweater. This one is from Bloomingdale's by Aqua and I've featured this a bunch on the website. If you follow my website, you probably remember this one. That key third layer is always cashmere. It's always lightweight. It always is comfortable. It always is soft. Okay. Cause you're probably going to be wearing that layer most. I remember when I was reporting on like snowstorms in Watertown, like there were times when it got down to like negative 50 and I'm not kidding, by the way, that's like legit negative 50. In those situations, I remember wearing like tights under my jeans and that's what I did to stay warm because otherwise the wind would just like whip right through your pants. Now what I do instead is I wear leggings. So you could do active wear. In this case, I'm wearing some Spanx faux leather leggings. I chose the Spanx leggings very strategically because they do have the shininess to the fabric and it's slippery. And the reason I chose the slippery fabric is because then the jeans won't stick to the leggings. So if you choose more of a knit, it's going to stick. It's going to drive you nuts. Same with tights, by the way, the pants always stick to the tights unless they're silky. Instead of wearing baggier jeans, I'm going to offset the volume of any coat that I put on and put on some skinny jeans. Obviously, if I'm doing this base layer, I've got to have a pair of skinny jeans that have a little flexibility and room. So a stretchy pair, a dark pair, and also a pair that's a little roomy on me in terms of fit. And then on my upper body, I wanted to show you an example of a more streamlined 
puffer coat. This one is actually a packable puffer, so it's much lighter and it looks long and lean. The whole look looks long and lean. You would never in a million years know that I had four layers on top, two layers on the bottom. Now, if you wanna go back to a heavier puffer because let's say it's really, really cold outside, let's go back to that same puffer that I showed you with the ALC sweater. If you swap out the big bulky Fair Isle ALC sweater for a more streamlined, lightweight, thin cashmere Fair Isle sweater like this one by Bloomingdale's, all of a sudden putting that big heavy puffer over it isn't a big deal. So I've got my sand puffer. I do up some of the snaps to, again to keep it more streamlined. And then the key here is the belt. So this puffer happens to have a belted waist that adds a lot of definition. It makes me feel less puffy, less bulky when I belt it. This would be for severe cold. Like I brought this jacket with me when we went to Iceland and it was like the coldest I've ever been in my life. Those are some options for you when you want to dress really warmly, layer beautifully, but not look so bulky. I kind of bled into tip number two, <laughs> but I'll just recap a little bit. So tip number two is to think slimmer. Instead of, you know, the big bulky sweater like I showed you, the ALC sweater and the baggy jeans and the frumpy boots and the oversized puffer, wear lighter layers like the Fair Isle cashmere sweater and then wear the same, so here's same jacket again, same coat again, but this time I can zip it because the, the layer underneath is thinner. And then it looks so much more streamlined between the zipping, the snapping, and the belting. It really comes down to that key of the right layers. Tip number three is to choose your boots carefully. So this is an easy one to throw away and you're like, ah, oh, I'm freezing, I'm in survival mode, I can't deal, the weather's so bad, I'm just gonna throw on my boots, right? I would make sure that you have some boots that don't make you feel so frumpy, okay? So let me give you an example. So on the left here, I'm wearing, you know, that same cashmere sweater I just showed you, Fair Isle, with some leggings and a pair of Uggs. Nothing wrong with Uggs, I'm not dissing Uggs. I own these boots, I wear these boots. But it's not exactly the most streamlined, like stylish, polished look. If I just swap out my Uggs for a pair of hidden wedge Sorrells, same, you know, warmth, waterproof, snowproof, all that, it looks so much longer and leaner and less frumpy. The goal is to look more streamlined, thin, long, lean, and less frumpy in the winter, then you ought to have a pair kind of like these Sorrells. There are options by Sorrell, by the way, that aren't as high as this wedge heel. So they do have now some that have the chunky heel that you could look at if you need a more manageable heel because these Sorrells do have quite a high wedge. The beauty of the wedge though is that in terms of heels, that's like so easy to walk in, so simple to walk in. And what I like about the Sorrells is the tread on the bottom. You know, Uggs I always find a bit more slippery and not as grippy as the Sorrells. Again, we're talking about ice and snow on the sidewalks. And it is, there is no other place that I've seen or been where the roads and the sidewalks are icier than they are here in Telluride. I've fallen before, and usually it's when I have on a pair of boots or shoes that do not have really good treads on the bottom. So it's a must for me. Before I move on from the boot category, just wanted to note that there are, you know, more city chic options. So if you're in Chicago or you're in Boston and you walk to work and you want something that's a little more polished, but looks more work office appropriate, look at Bolando boots, look at Aquatalia boots. I've showed you guys my hidden wedge patent leather Aquatalia booties. I love those so much and they are very dressy and polished. You would never know that they're a weatherproof booty. So those are two options for those of you looking for that sort of boot. They're also very streamlined and the least frumpy weatherproof shoe you're ever going to find. The fourth tip is to belt your coats. So I do see a lot of women wearing these boxy kind of like car coats or boxy wool coats. And there's nothing wrong with those, but if your goal is to look less frumpy, then I would suggest looking for a coat, wool coat, that is belted and maybe a little more fluid, less boxy. What do I mean by that? Okay, so let's take a look at a boxy coat. This is one I bought a couple years ago at the Nordstrom sale. It's in plaid. I love it, it's so pretty, but it is boxy. It does make me look bigger and bulkier and if my goal is to look less frumpy, I'm not going to choose this coat. 
In contrast, I can choose one of my line wrap coats, which will flow and like I said, the fluidity will kind of meet my body. They skim along the body. And then they have the belted waist, which highlights the waist and creates shape. Because the problem is when you're adding all these layers and all these clothes, you lose your shape. You look so boxy, right? So adding that belted coat really does make a big difference. Now, I like this coat so well that I bought it in two colors, camel and dark green, which you'll see more of in just a minute. Tip number five is to streamline your scarf. I know there can be a tendency to grab your scarf and just throw it on and it's Sometimes it looks like it's like swallowing your whole face, right? It's just like overpowering, overwhelming. It's taking over everything. You can control the scarf. Don't let the scarf control you. Here's an example of the scarf taking over. It's coming to get me. It's eating my face. Ah! And then here's an example of me taking control of the scarf. And all I'm doing here is instead of just haphazardly throwing it on, I'm just being a bit more strategic about how I tie it. So all I'm doing is I'm looping it from front to back so that it protects my neck and keeps my neck warm. And then I bring the ends back to the front. I knot them one time, not two, just once, and then tuck them into my jacket. So by adding that little extra tuck into the jacket, you are definitely taking off some of the volume of that scarf and it will be more streamlined, less overpowering. And again, you'll be wearing it instead of it wearing you. For those of you who stuck around, I've got a few bonus tips. Woohoo! I get this question all the time. How do I wear my coat over my blazer? This is a real problem because you want to wear your blazer. You want to get to your destination and wear your blazer because it's so cute. And you don't want to like not wear your blazer all winter just because of the coat situation. So what do you do? You have to have a coat that will go over your blazer. It is that simple. So if you're putting on your wool coat and it won't go over your blazer, you need to get another coat. You've got to take your blazer to the store with you or try it on at home, order a few and try them on at home and make sure there's enough room in the shoulders, enough room in the sleeves for you to put the wool coat over your blazer. So my line wrap coats are a perfect example of coats that work beautifully over a blazer. Here's an example of me putting on my Veronica Beard Dickie blazer, scuba blazer, with a hoodie Dickie that's in a leopard print. I've got some leggings on, some boots, those Sorrel boots. I throw my line coat over it. I can go with the green, I can go with the camel, doesn't matter. It fits over it beautifully. When I reach my destination, I take off my wrap coat, my wool coat, and I look really cute, polished, and ready to go. The same can be done with a leather moto jacket. Like they should not be relegated to the fall only. Like wear them all winter, okay? And this is how you do it. You just put the coat over the moto. So you can do your wool wrap coat over the moto or you can even do your puffer over the moto. And the other trick that I love to use for extreme cold weather, and I talked about this one in my outfits for the snow video, which if you missed, I will put a link to it below. It's such a great video. I go through a lot of these same tips and tricks, but it's just a slightly different format. So go back and watch that video if this is a topic that's important to you. By the way, if you're like in Texas and Southern California, you're like, what? This doesn't pertain to me. Well, maybe you're traveling somewhere cold and you have no clue how to dress or you're moving somewhere cold and you have no clue how to dress. I think that this will be a game changer for you in that situation. And some of you may already live in cold climates and think you know all the things about dressing for the cold weather, but you're picking up nuggets here and there that are helpful. So hopefully that's the case. That's always my goal. The same concept of layering your wool coat over your blazer and moto jacket, you could also layer a wool coat over a very thin lightweight puffer coat. I know. It's like, pew, what? Yes. I don't know if it was last year or the year before I went to Poland with my husband. My husband does a Holocaust education trip and we did kind of a mini trip together. I wore my packable puffer and then I layered my wrap coat over it. And so I felt like I looked decent and polished and stylish, but I wasn't adding all that bulk. I still felt streamlined. And one last thing I just wanted to mention with your hat, okay, because Remember your mom used to say, you lose all your heat from your head? My mom did anyway. I don't know if your mom said that. Maybe you didn't grow up in the tundra, so 
Your mom didn't tell you that all the time. <laughs> Mine did. You have to wear a hat if you're in an extreme cold environment. What I like to do is I like to double down on the hats. And I'll either take like my faux fur headband, put that around my ears, and then put the hat over the faux fur headband, or more of like a beanie cap, and then put another hat over that. It adds double the warmth, and it's definitely, it definitely makes a huge difference. Let's recap, it's so important if you live in a cold climate, even if you don't, if you're traveling to a cold climate, to know these tips and tricks when it comes to dressing in the winter to not look frumpy. You don't wanna look frumpy, you don't wanna look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow woman. The right layers, making sure that you have lightweight, breathable, fitted to the body base layers that will layer beautifully under anything that you're wearing. So making sure that you do have the tank, you do have the long sleeve tee, you do have the lightweight cashmere sweater, and you don't go this route of wearing that gigantic oversized sweater that's so pretty but then doesn't layer under anything. With your layers and with your coat, you have to think slimmer. There are packable puffers that are quite lightweight. There is an Italian line called Herno, H-E-R-N-O, that creates beautiful lightweight puffer coats and jackets. If you need a heavier duty puffer, make sure that it does have like a design detail like I showed you with the sand puffer and that belted waist. Choose your boots carefully. Don't just throw on the old frumpy, gigantic Ugg boots. Wear a little heel there. Wear something that you feel a little sassy in, right? It has to have all the boxes checked. It's gotta have the treads. It's gotta have the waterproof feature. It's gotta be warm and comfy, but why not? add a little pizzazz there and a little length. Belt it, making sure that if you're wearing a wool coat, you wear a belted wool coat, not an oversized boxy coat. And just like with outfits, you know, a loud bold print is going to make you look bigger than something that's solid and a little more understated. Make sure you streamline that scarf. You are wearing the scarf and the scarf is not wearing you. Do Find a coat you can layer over those blazers and motor jackets as well as a lightweight puffer. That will really up your style game in the winter season. Do you have any questions? Did I miss something? The other thing I didn't mention earlier is that you can always, with those base layers, you can always go with a smart wool fabric. Smart wool or wool in general is definitely one of the warmer fabrics. The problem is it's often itchy. So finding smart wool or base layers that aren't itchy, if you find them, Great. I haven't talked about the blog in a while, but I did do a blog post where I talked about how to stay warm while you're skiing. And I don't know how many of you were skiers or you're going skiing this year. I've learned a lot of tricks living in a ski town for staying warm. So I did a blog post that covers everything when it comes to staying warm while skiing. It's incredible. So if that's you, you're always cold while you're skiing and it ruins your experience, you must check out that blog post. It's so good. What other tips? Do you have, did I miss any? Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I will see you next time. Bye.